just so you understand. Very simple. It's very simple. There was no crime. There was no collusion. House Democrats want to hear from McGahn and Mueller, for that matter, in person before the Judiciary Committee, which will hold its second hearing on the Mueller report next Thursday. Democrats were handed something of a setback today in their oversight efforts. We'll explain this. The Justice Department today said the Treasury Department doesn't have to give the White, the House Ways and Means Committee President Trump's tax returns, saying the request lacked a legitimate legislative purpose. The battle over those records, those tax returns, now appears headed for federal court, where a lot of experts predict the administration could lose this one because the language in the law is very plain. And as we mentioned, Trump today tried to clarify statements he made to ABC News about accepting campaign help from Russia or other foreign governments without automatically notifying the FBI. During an attempted cleanup in the form of a long phone interview with Fox at Fred's this morning, here now is what the president is saying about being offered incriminating information on political opponents. Of course, you have to look at it, because if you don't look at it, you're not going to know if it's bad. How are you going to know if it's bad? But of course, you give it to the FBI or report it to the attorney general or somebody uh, like that. But of course, you do that. You wouldn't you couldn't have that happen with our country. Nobody is going to say bad things to me. They know that I'm a very straight player. They know one thing about me. I love this country more than anything. I love this country. This is all happening as there is a certain amount of upheaval in the White House Communications Office. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders is leaving at the end of the month, perhaps to run for governor back home in Arkansas. NBC News reports some of the top contenders to replace her include Stephanie Grisham, Communications Director for the First Lady, Hogan Gidley, the current White House Deputy Press Secretary, and Steve Cortez. He's a former Trump campaign official who these days appears on CNN to defend the president pretty much regardless of the topic. Reporter Annie Carney of The New York Times, who will join us in just a moment, notes the White House is now thinking about bringing back the daily briefing. It's been 95 days since the last one. She writes, quote, some White House officials have argued the daily briefing is a powerful tool that would help elevate Mr. Trump above his Democratic opponent in the 2020 race. Others have argued that Mr. Trump has never liked the daily briefing as a forum to disseminate the message of the day, preferring to do it himself on Twitter. Keep in mind, Trump is now just days away from officially, officially launching his re-election campaign. That happens next Tuesday when he holds a rally in Orlando, Florida. Without delay, here for our leadoff discussion on a Friday night, Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today, author of the best-selling new Barbara Bush biography, The Matriarch, Annie Carney, White House reporter for The New York Times, and Jonathan Allen, our NBC News national political reporter. Good evening and welcome to you all. Susan, I'd like to begin with you. Uh, Mitch McConnell last night repeated his phrase, case closed, on all of this, on the entire Mueller matter. Why do you think the president thought of speaking out on it now that he could perhaps uh, make things better? You know, I, I don't think the president probably set out to talk about it, but George Stephanopoulos very predictably asked him about it. And what was extraordinary was it was as though that the previous couple years of investigations by Robert Mueller never happened. I mean, the president outlined a willingness to do exactly what got him in the previous hot water of a inv long investigation into Russian collusion and after that obstruction of justice uh, you know this is this is really an extraordinary self-inflicted wound on the on the part of the president if the case is closed as the white house would like to say as mitch mcconnell who is a very disciplined person likes to say the president should decline to address these issues or at least to play out a position that doesn't take him right back to where he was in the 2016 campaign hey john what's the upside do you think as trump sees it of going after don mcgahn it's a great question, Brian. I mean, uh, one of the things we've talked about through all of this is the president's efforts to intimidate witnesses, and perhaps uh, he's trying to leverage Don McGahn in some way. Perhaps he believes uh, that he can put some sort of uh, fear in Don McGahn uh, by calling him a liar, or at the very least, uh, get his own uh, his own supporters to believe that anything Don McGahn says before Congress is untruthful. Maybe even to get the Justice Department to believe that anything Don McGahn says is untruthful. Uh, it is unfathomable to me that the credibility of Don McGahn 
uh, his testimony before Robert Mueller and the, the witnesses that Robert Mueller had supporting that uh, would be called into question as compared to uh, what the president says in an interview with George Stephanopoulos. Andy, I have something to play you that uh, those watching in real time thought was a great bit of analysis on the fly. Here is how Nicole Wallace opened her broadcast this afternoon at 4 Eastern. If you swapped in Robert Mueller for George Stephanopoulos, the Mueller investigation may have ended very differently. When seated with anyone other than Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram, Donald Trump seems to fall apart. He seems to lack the mental acuity and the truth-telling capacity to field real questions from real journalists. Annie, uh, what's the chance she has it about right there? Well, there is, I mean, you can draw a line between this interview with George Stephanopoulos and the now famous interview Donald Trump did with Lester Holt, uh, where he explained the real reason why he fired Comey uh, and gave the real reason. So when he does these straight interviews, he steps in hot water and in a way that he doesn't do on the Fox and Friends phoners. Um, so I think there is something to say that these these settings that his aides have pushed him and convinced him would be good um, end up backfiring. Even White House officials were admitting today that this did not go. Uh, he didn't say things that were particularly helpful to him in this interview. Speaking of which, Susan Page, uh, the backtrack on election interference, on accepting uh, intel from a foreign power, you could tell that moved the needle because, uh, by my viewing, it forced Republican senators to say words, uh, some of them uh, critical of this president. And I guess that backtracking is going to have to continue. Well, the, the idea that the president of the United States would basically invite the Russians to once again come forward with negative information about his Democratic opponent in this in this race, I think, was just a bridge too far for people like Mitt Romney and even Lindsey Graham, who is one of his uh, one of his closest allies in in the Senate. Uh, it, it did it, it did pro provoke controversy. It was very hard to find a defender of a president on this issue. And uh, and that is that is pretty rare. Uh, you know, you also had the head of the FEC putting out a statement saying it is illegal to do that. This is not allowed by any foreign entity and especially uh, a, a foreign government and one that is an adversary of the United States. Yeah, Susan, I, uh, you and I have been around a bit. Mm. I do not remember <laughs> anything on FEC letterhead going back decades, anything like the tone and tenor of that letter. Because and to, directed at the president of the United States saying, to be clear, this is not acceptable, this is not legal, and it hasn't been for a long time. Uh, so that is, I'm sure, why the president decided to walk it back on Fox and Friends, although he didn't really walk it back all the way. He didn't say he refused to listen to dirt from a foreign entity. He said he would turn around and alert the FBI or another law enforcement agency, but he would listen to it first. That's at odds with, for instance, what Tom Downey, the congressman from Long Island, did when he was working for Al Gore's presidential campaign. And a briefing book, a George, Bush, George W. Bush's briefing book, showed up uh, at the campaign headquarters over the transom. They didn't look at it. They immediately called the FBI. That is the expected, that is a political norm in our country for things like this. And hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.